What is going on everyone? It is me the Lone Vault Wanderer and I'm here recording a video for Fallout 4 just coming back from my weekend break back home to see my family and to see my girlfriend. It was a good time off. I just didn't do any YouTube videos. I did the podcast and was on Twitter a little bit. Maybe I could have been a bit better behaved but regardless it was a good time off and I'm ready to make a video about Fallout 4 because we've just had three Bioshock videos on my channel and we should probably mix it up. So tonight I want to talk about a Fallout 4 article that popped up on Polygon by a writer going by the name of Holly Green. This article is linked in the description below and it is entitled Fallout 4 Proved Bigger Isn't Always Better. Now before you guys start criticizing this person or the author of this article and start criticizing to death what she said about Fallout 4, just read the article again linked in the description below and just hear her out, okay? Discussion is healthy, criticism is healthy, it's not always a bad thing. And I want to try and sum up nicely what she was trying to get across in this article of hers. And you know what, probably the best way is to highlight a number of paragraphs in her article, and then I want to get all of your thoughts about it, and I'll quickly give my opinion about her article. So about midway down, she says that given the enormous creative scope of Bethesda's games, their focus on time management makes sense. It's a linear relationship. The bigger the game is, the less time developers will have to work on each part. At some point, it may be worth moving the slider back towards smaller games that allow for more environments that don't feel like they were cranked out of a production line. When open world games become so vast that time management pushes productivity over individuality to the point that the end result feels generic, it's time we must ask. Are games becoming too big? At one point, she uses an example of a different game and says how it's similar to the Commonwealth in the sense that it had to be revisited many times for the run of the mill, clear the enemy side quest, and it becomes forgettable. Without a unique aesthetic flourish, the location is no longer distinctive and disappears in a sea of uniformity, its significance lost to the player. However, other areas though could have benefited from a little diversity. I've scoured the inner buildings of the Commonwealth and the scattered ruins beyond for settlement scrap and supplies more hours than I can count, but I'd be hard pressed to tell you anything special about them. The ones I remember the most had a unique detail. The General Atomics Galleria with its imposing spire, Parson State Asylum with its breathtaking architecture and sprawling ivy invested grounds and the Great Green Wall of Diamond City. And that's what really makes me love Fallout in the first place. The story each location tells by what it left behind is the strongest reinforcement of the series' themes of destruction and rebirth. Whether a room has gone undisturbed since the bombs fell, or has been stripped of its useful items and made into a den for a gang of raiders, it gives a window into both the resourcefulness and fragility of the human race. Over the hundreds and hundreds of hours I've spent on Fallout and Elder Scrolls, I've noticed that the Commonwealth feels smaller than Skyrim. This saddens me. I wish there were more of Fallout 4 to explore. But do I want more because I like the game, or is it because my hunger for spelunking in irradiated ruins hasn't been satisfied? Is it actually smaller than Skyrim, or does it merely feel that way because the landscape has become a blur? Perception flavors what seems to be reality of size. Is it smaller, or do I just think it is? If added open world space comes at the expense of full artistic potential, each new location banged out without the little extra flourish that makes it special, it may not be worth it. In an exploration-based game like Fallout, the loss is felt the most. I want every area I approach in the Fallout universe to be a Pandora's box of danger and mystery, each with its own story to tell. That key series element has already been tampered by heavy enemy respawns, repeating side quests, and the constant grind of collecting scrap and parts, which arguably contributes to the more generic feel of many areas than the art kit. The solitude of methodic exploration that first drew me to the series is gone, and the feel of Fallout 3 and New Vegas is lost. If Fallout 4 were just a bit smaller, but in return offered the mystique and addictive allure of Fallout New Vegas with each and every location, this would be easier to handle. Size is important, of course. I'm mostly arguing for a slight course correction in the other direction to even things out. So I think that Holly does make a number of good points about Fallout 4. Um, what I will say, at least with regards to my um, memories of Fallout 3 and New Vegas, it's hard to draw those memories because Fallout 3 was the first game I've ever played in the Fallout series, so I know that there's heavy, heavy, heavy feelings of nostalgia. It's like when people say that Ocarina of Time 
uh, was the greatest game of all time. I believe that, but I do know that I have my nostalgic glasses on when I say it. And it's a similar thing with Fallout 3 in New Vegas. I love those games and I remember them so vividly in terms of the locations I explored and the areas I saw. For example, New Vegas' Hoover Dam is just imprinted in my memory and maybe that's because of the last mission in the game where the all-out war happens right on Hoover Dam. Or even Fallout 3's, you know, Washington Ruins. Those are areas and environments that are literally imprinted in my brain. And with Fallout 4, can I say that I have those uh, similar environments imprinted in my brain? Probably not so much. There are areas that I definitely remember. Maybe not to the extent of Fallout 3 or New Vegas. But again, is that a nostalgic thing? Is that because I haven't had years to ponder this game like I have with Fallout 3 and New Vegas? Is it because I haven't played Fallout 4 as much as I have to Fallout 3 and New Vegas? Arguably. I've only done about two playthroughs of the game so far because I have a full-time job. So after I was done reviewing the game, it was mostly spent on video content and playing the game here and there. So I definitely haven't played Fallout 4 as I have, you know, Fallout 3 and New Vegas, which I poured hundreds and hundreds of hours into each. So it makes sense for me to remember those areas and those games more vividly compared to Fallout 4. So back on point though, with what she's saying about how bigger isn't necessarily better, I think she's right. And I think the discussion more so comes down to whether Fallout 4 strikes that balance in the best way. And with any game, I think there's always improvements that can be made. I think she makes a really good point in saying that, yes, bigger isn't always better. Just because there's more to explore, it doesn't mean that everything to explore is interesting if it's just the same assets popping up again and again and again just in a different layout. Am I saying that Fallout 4 does this? To an extent it does. I, I do still have areas of Fallout 4 that I remember and that I love. The Galleria as Holly mentioned was a really really great area that I loved when you, you go up in that spire as she called it and fight the final boss. That was a cool area. Also as well when you're fighting the robot in the boxing ring. I really love that minigame. The Institute was really interesting to me and I'll always remember it. The Prid Win was also really cool. I always remember the Pridwin because I sided with the Brotherhood of Steel, so I actually traveled there often and I just remember the layout so vividly. I'm just trying not to be so harsh on Fallout 4 because I don't want to put my nostalgic glasses on and say Fallout 3 did this better or Fallout New Vegas did this better. I will say that Fallout 3 is my favorite Fallout game without a doubt, but I'm not going to criticize Fallout 4 just because I remember certain areas in the game better than I do for Fallout 4 because again, all the reasons that are listed above. But I guess the questions that I want to put forward to all of you guys is firstly, what do you think about the points that Holly makes in her article? Again, linked in the description below. I think she makes a number of good points. And also as well, a second question what do you think about the balance in games generally of trying to be too large and too ambitious versus trying to be smaller but having more detail and intrigue in each of the individual areas and locations you can actually visit? And then maybe a third question with regards directly to Fallout 4, how well do you think Fallout 4 draws that balance between being a large open world game and actually having interesting areas within that world to explore that are distinct and that feel different to the other areas that you've explored? I think Holly again is definitely right that bigger is isn't always better. I probably wouldn't be as harsh as she's being with regards to Fallout 4, especially when she says that the solitude of methodic exploration that first drew me to the series is gone. I felt like this a bit harsh. I definitely still got that sense of feeling when I played Fallout 4. I still got that sense of immersion and, you know, being immersed in this world, this post-apocalyptic world, that first feeling when you walk out of the vault, that feeling when you're in the uh, glowing sea was just awesome. I, I love that. That really felt like a post-apocalyptic world compared to the rest of the world. So I do think, of course, that Fallout 4 could have improved in that regard in terms of balancing open world versus having interesting places to explore and not being too generic in each of the locations and environments. But nevertheless, I probably wouldn't go as harsh as Holly is going. However, I do respect her opinion and she makes some great points that really makes me think and I'm hoping that it makes all of you think because I would like for all of you to share your views in the comments below. Again, please be respectful guys. There's no need to jump on the hate bandwagon and criticize games or criticize this author or criticize other people unjustly. Just engage in discussion and debate. That would be really appreciated. And until next time, this has been Lone. Please take care of yourself and as always, keep fighting the good fight.